Hey there, Sooner football fans. Another Tuesday means another Brent Venables press conference to discuss. And obviously, it's Texas week. What isn't there to discuss on a week like this? The Sooners 5-0 and heading into this matchup, ranked number 12 in the nation. Texas 5-0, and the Longhorns number three in the nation heading into this contest. I'm Parker Thune. That is Jesse Crittenden beside me. And as we dive into the things that we heard from Brent Venables today, Jesse, uh, let's start off with one of Brent's more memorable snippets when he was talking about how much pride he takes in Oklahoma football and what it means to the Sooner fan base to compete and to win every week, but particularly this weekend against the team from down south of the border. Here's Brent Venables. There's a lot of uh, people in this state and a lot of alumni that are south of uh, the Red River that, you know, I've always taken um, uh, um, great pride in uh, doing a good job with whatever role I had, knowing that uh, the, the college universities that I work for um, are counting on us to put out a great product and something for them to be proud of. I, I that part, uh, listen, I'm not, I don't, I don't coach for cheers and likes and clicks. And I don't, uh, when, when things go bad, I'm not affected that way either. What I'm affected is when uh, we're not putting a good product on the field. And um, I, I take uh, pride in watching people have joy in watching our guys play with incredible effort, fundamentals, toughness, uh, precision, uh, with an edge, uh, with class. I take pride in that. So there you go, Jesse. The Sooners head coach setting the tone this week. He takes plenty of pride in the product that the Sooners have been able to put together on the field thus far. But I think as we've been talking about for weeks now, it really has come into focus now and it's officially on the horizon it is the week where we're going to learn a lot about this Oklahoma football team. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I'm going to have a story later on OUinsider.com about, I think some of the questions that we still have about this OU football team after five weeks, Parker, I think a lot of those questions are going to be answered. I think, you know, primarily defensively is it, how, how real is this defensive improvement? Obviously it is improved from a year ago, but Texas Texas's offense is just simply going to offer much bigger challenges than OU has faced uh, all season. It's not even close. And then OU's running back room. I mean, I think this is, this is, I think the message, the, the first five weeks has been uh, maybe it's not time to panic yet. They're still trying to figure things out. If things aren't great this weekend, I think now we'll know after that, this is maybe time to panic about that running back room. So overall, I think I think Brent Venables and this coaching staff, these players are trying really hard to preach that this is just like every other week, but Parker, it's not. And they know it's not. And that's why Brent Venables went on that lengthy run about taking pride in, in this game and the team. The, the reality is this is not a normal game and this is not a normal OU Texas game, Parker. The first time in 12 years, both these teams are undefeated. The SEC move coming in a year. A lot riding on this game, Parker. More at stake in this game than we have seen in recent memory first two times these programs will square off as undefeated opponents since 2011 so it's been a minute since both of these teams waltzed into the cotton bowl with a spotless record and venables knows as well as everyone that yeah this game this week is larger than life in general but with what texas brings to the table particularly on offense there's going to be an increased degree of difficulty for Oklahoma to accomplish what they want to accomplish on Saturday down in Dallas. Here's what Venables had to say about the challenges of scheming for Texas's offense. Yeah, they're, again, incredibly efficient. They're in the RPO world, uh, like everybody in college football, and uh, they're really good at all the spots. So it's hard for you to like, all right, let's, let's take these guys away and let's make them count on this. You know, you have several games, you have, well, let's cut the head off the snake, whatever. They got they got all kinds of them, you know, everywhere. It's not coach speak. It, they're really good and talented, and, and there's not an area that, 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 that we don't have to play well. We need to play well everywhere. And, Jesse, for those that have been watching college football, for those who have been, pay, who have been paying attention to what Texas has done week in and week out, who took note of 
the Longhorns' road victory over Alabama in week two, most conspicuously, it's nothing we don't already know. The Longhorns have playmakers all over the field. They do, and I mean, I think they've looked pretty impressive. I mean, this has not been the Texas team of the last 10 to 15 years. It really hasn't. This team uh, not only has playmakers, Parker, because they always have playmakers. I think the difference of what we've seen in this Texas team through five games is it just feels like a more cohesive unit. It feels like this Texas team finally is learning how to use these playmakers and and get the best out of them. And, I mean, you look at their – receive your their receiver room with you know Xavier Worthy you know look at the running back room with Jonathan Brooks I mean Jonathan Brooks already has 600 rushing yards on the season Parker we're not even halfway through the year so I mean and I think Quinn Ewers um, has been pretty solid I mean I don't know if he's been you know one of the absolute best quarterbacks in college football but, but he's been solid through five weeks he's a good quarterback he's running this offense really well I mean this offense is averaging 36 points a week and you mentioned it that comes with uh, a win against Alabama. So this is not the Texas teams of old. I think Brent Venables alluded to it. This is going to be a challenge. I mean, the OU defense has been improved through five games, but we're going to learn how improved they really are this weekend, maybe more than any other weekend uh, throughout the rest of the season. Now, Quinn Ewers has been playing pretty good ball for Texas. You mentioned it though, Jesse, he's not really a guy that you would put in the absolute top tier of quarterbacks across college football, at least right now. Now, a guy who's knocking on the door of that tier, undoubtedly, is the guy that's going to play quarterback for Oklahoma on Saturday. Dylan Gabriel, 19 total touchdowns, just three turnovers through five games. He's in the national top 10 in basically every major passing category, and in most, he's actually within the top five, completing 75% of his passes. Uh, He's been a pretty effective trigger man, all told for Oklahoma thus far this season. And of course, for everybody that remembers what transpired last year at the Cotton Bowl, you understand why it transpired. Dylan Gabriel was not in uniform for the Sooners that day. Now, with a healthy Gabriel back in the mix, naturally there is a much greater feeling of confidence heading into this game and that you know it's going to be a game, Jesse. I remember sitting across from you and previewing this game last year and – Essentially coming to the agreement, (laughs) coming to the uh, concession, if you will, that, okay, if Gabriel plays, Oklahoma's going to have a chance. If Gabriel doesn't play, you can take this one to the bank. It's going to be a Texas victory. Obviously, he didn't play. Texas ran away with the game. But Brent Venables certainly very eager to have his starting quarterback back in action here's what he had to say about gabriel's play thus far and what carries over into a contest like this yeah i think it's just good for our team this season um he's been a huge part from a leadership standpoint and and again an efficiency standpoint uh where we're at right now through five games um uh, couldn't ask for for much better you know you'd have to be pretty dang picky uh to find some uh, places, but you know he's he's done incredibly well. Uh, he's made improvement. He's making great decisions. Again, playing with great confidence. Now, still having the humility and the respect for what it takes to be successful. Uh, again, he practices uh, with a game like mentality, and uh, and it shows up. You know, he's been uh, playing within the system and trusting people around him. And uh, and again, the surrounding supporting cast has been playing uh, uh, well as as well but again every week is a season of its own and uh uh it's the best of one and so uh you know you got to start completely over and you gotta this is a game of doing and so uh you know that's the rear view mirror the first five games he should be confident uh because of the the work that he's put in and the success that we've had but every week you got to start over now there's a lot of truth in what venable says there jesse obviously Gabriel has been impressive through five weeks. No one is denying that. No one is contradicting that. But we are about to witness him step onto a stage that blows away any stage onto which he has stepped over the course of his collegiate career. This will be the biggest moment of Dylan Gabriel's football life to this point. No, it is. And not to make too big of a deal of it, Parker, but the way Dylan has played through five weeks, the way OU is five and oh, um, I mean, you're right. He's 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 played he's simply been one of the, the elite quarterbacks in college football. He's not been perfect. There are throws he needs to make, but overall he's been an elite quarterback. 
Parker, if he's fantastic on Saturday and OU gets a win and, and he's great, the Heisman buzz is going to be legitimate. It's going to pick up. I mean, it just is. You could probably argue that he already deserves at least a little bit of buzz. And I'm not saying he's going to win regardless, but if he plays like he has been playing and OU wins being a near touchdown uh, underdog heading into this game and you look at o- the rest of OU's schedule – uh, th- I think this is going to be not make or break for Dylan Gabriel, but as great as he's played through five weeks, if he doesn't, if he doesn't play very well, I think that's going to put his season so far into a different and more negative context. If he plays up to that standard, Parker, the Heisman buzz is going to be real. It just is. Now, Gabriel talked earlier this week about how he watched part of last year's game from the sideline, watched part of it from the box. In the feeling of helplessness that you imagine a guy like Dylan Gabriel is carrying at that point, just watching his team get utterly immolated and be powerless to intervene or do anything. Well, he he has the chance as much so as anybody this Saturday to not, not completely erase 49 to nothing from memory, but certainly to establish with authority the reality that this is not the same Oklahoma team that walked into the Cotton Bowl hamstrung a year ago, and this is not the same Oklahoma team that stumbled down the stretch to a six and seven finish. Now, one, another thing that Brent Venables made sure to emphasize in his presser today is that this is a completely new team in 2023 and not the same group of guys that walked into this matchup with Texas last season. With the way they beat yeah. you last year, how important is it to quelch that momentum? I mean, I don't know if the momentum, momentum usually you say the momentum uh, a year ago shouldn't have anything to do with this year. Uh, we've got um, a much different team. Many of the players in our locker room weren't here, but there's certainly many that were. Okay, Jesse, how realistic is it for the Sooners to take the field on Saturday and have completely wiped 49 to nothing from their minds? Uh, again, you're going to, I mean, you, you're going to hear a lot of coach speak and player speak. I promise you 49, nothing is on the minds of every single player who was on the roster last year. It's on the mind of every coach and it's on the mind of the players who weren't here last year. I guarantee you that. And so I think, and I mean, I think you've seen Dylan Gabriel play with a little bit of an edge the last couple of weeks. I think you're going to see that again on Saturday and Brent Venables is right to be confident about this team. It's not just that Dylan Gabriel's back. It's particularly defensively. This team is just in a different, it's just playing at a different level than it was last season. Think about, it's not just the 49, nothing uh, last year, Parker. Think about the two weeks that led up to that game, that, that really disappointing loss against Kansas state at home and then getting utterly dominated by TCU the week before OU Texas. So this is a different team. They're playing at a different level. They're five and zero as opposed to three and two. And I think it's healthy to use a little bit of that forty nine nothing motivation. Why would you not? You're an underdog going into this game. You know the path to the conference title game and the playoff is right in front of you if you win this game. I think it's healthy if this OU team plays with an edge. And I think, despite some of the coach speak and players speak, I guarantee you. Brent Venables is trying to foster a little bit of that edge in his team going into this weekend. It definitely feels like everybody is taking this a little bit personal and you want to, you want to talk about coach speak. Uh, we, we got some from Brent Venables earlier today and we, we'd gotten a little bit of it after the game on Saturday when he insisted that this is just another game, just another week, just another task and another mission for this football team. Well, it's not as evidenced by the fact that we only got four players for media availability this week four seniors that absolutely are too intelligent and too guarded to pop off with anything that's going to be bulletin board material heading into this football game here's venables on his decision to only make those four seniors available we only got four guys to talk to this week four veteran guys is that just a a decision of hey we have a singular focus this is a yeah i just i mean you want me to be uh, totally honest i know how like a lot of a lot of times on Mondays or uh, Tuesdays, uh, when you talk to the guys, it's still about last week. You know, it's never about this opponent. And uh, and, and this week is always my 13, 14 plus years experience is that um, we, we, we try to get somebody. That's how I see it, right, wrong, or indifferent. Uh, 
I still like y'all and respect y'all, but it's like, oh, let me see if we can get him to say something. And uh, so that's now we want to talk about this week's opponent, you know. So uh, we got four good ones to, to represent us, you know, the right way. But that's it. So there you hear Venable's perspective. And he's right, Jesse. He is. From a media perspective, everybody's fishing for those compelling sound bites heading into a game like this. It's part of the pageantry of the rivalry. It's something that is entirely natural and to be expected. But uh, Venables took a very preemptive measure this week, a prohibitive measure, if you will, and said, no, nope, we're not even going to give him the opportunity uh, to throw chum to the sharks down on the 40 acres. So uh, they're they're definitely approaching this with a little bit more. And I, I don't know if I would call it more effort, more sincerity, more seriousness, but uh, everybody is cranked up to 100 in advance of this football game. Yeah, I mean, I think the reality is that's you want evidence that this is not a normal week, that nobody consider this considers this a normal week. It's that we didn't learn until we got to player availability last night that there was not going to be any player availability Tuesday night. Even the, the OU media team didn't know. So I think it's one of those things, obviously, a, a perspective from a media person is it's 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 disappointing. Um, but yeah, if you're from a coach's perspective, you're thinking about it from Brett Venable's perspective, it's reasonable. And I think it's understandable. And uh, the reality is it, that's the biggest p- and only piece of evidence that you need that this OU team remembers 49, nothing last year that they're thinking about. I mean, they're thinking about this game in a different light. It's, it's a different energy. It's a different edge, all of those things. And I think they're trying to conduct this like, I mean, they're trying to do everything they normally do to prepare for a game and they're taking that up to an 11. So I think that's going to be interesting to see it on the field too. If you can see, if you could feel a different OU team compared to a year ago. Now we will break this game down in the coming days from every imaginable angle on the Oklahoma drill podcast on the OU insider under the visor podcast with myself and Brandon drum. Uh, For those that haven't gotten familiar with the Oklahoma drill yet, fantastic new OU football podcast from Jesse and our man, Brian Clinton. So be sure to check that out. But Jesse, as we kind of put a bow on this breakdown, let's briefly just take a look ahead to the game that will be played down at the Cotton Bowl on Saturday. Uh, What's one thing that Oklahoma has to do in order to accomplish their mission and win this football game and bring Brent Venable's record back to 500 against the Texas Longhorns and What's one area of vulnerability that you're concerned about with this Oklahoma football team heading into that matchup where you feel like the Longhorns have an advantage that Oklahoma is going to have to overcome? Yeah, I'm really going to look at OU's defense uh, here in terms of something they need to do. And and Parker, I think that that defensive line has got to cause chaos. They've got to get in the backfield. They've got to get Quinn Ewers uh, second guessing himself, having to make decisions under pressure. I think we saw it last year. If you give Quinn Ewers all day to throw, I mean, again, I don't know if he's an, a, a a top elite quarterback, but he's a good enough quarterback. If you give him time, he's going to pick this OU defense apart. He just is. So I think it ultimately starts on this defensive line. Uh, Parker looked for somebody like uh, PJ Adebauera to make a huge impact. They're going to need him to cause chaos. They're going to need Rondale Bothroy to cause chaos. That's what they're, that's what they're going to need. And Parker, if there's anything I'm concerned about for OU, it's that running game. I, I I will say this now, and the running game has been maybe the biggest topic of conversation through five weeks, but I'm comfortable saying this. If OU can't run the ball effectively on Saturday, they will not win. I'm I'm confident saying that. I, I really I am. I mean, it sounds obvious, but like if we get the OU running game that we've seen the last five weeks that we saw against Iowa State averaging only 3.8 a carry. OU is not going to win this game. Dil- I think Dylan Gabriel is going to play well. I think he's going to have success but it can't be Dylan Gabriel by himself. So if there's anything I'm looking at in terms of vulnerability, the OU running game doesn't need to average seven yards a carry, but they got to do a lot better than 3.8. Now, I, f- from my perspective, Jesse, I think Oklahoma would be well served to turn this game into a track because they are at a deficiency when it comes to being able to run the football. And so if this becomes a ground and pound three yards in a cloud of dust type of game, I think that plays to the Longhorns advantage, but if you can turn this into a circa 2018 big 12 football game, and it doesn't necessarily have to be 66 to 59, but if you drive the scoring into the thirties and forties, 
I actually favor Oklahoma to win this football game. And that is because I look at Dylan Gabriel and I look at Quinn Ewers as quarterbacks. And there is one area in which Gabriel is substantially better than Quinn Ewers. And that is keeping the ball out of harm's way. And if you can win the turnover battle, if you can take advantage of a few Ewers miscues and generate turnovers and you can get takeaways and set your offense up with short field. Things like that are often the razor's edge in a track meet type of football game. So that I think, and there are many different paths to victory for Oklahoma, the way that they're playing on both sides of the ball. But to me, that seems like the most logical path. And so I, I would like to see Oklahoma come out on Saturday, air this thing out, play with tempo and take the initiative to set the tempo of this football game and not allow the Longhorns to slow things down and muck it up, if you will. And then, man, it kind of to that same point, I think if this turns into a field position battle, Oklahoma's in trouble because the kicking game has been rough. Kicking game has really been rough. The Sooners have nobody on that roster that is even close to Michael Turk's level when it comes to being able to flip the field and, uh, just generally keep the opponent from operating on a short field offensively. So if this does become a slower game, if it does become a game where you got to capitalize on your opportunities when you're in opposing territory and you do got to have a guy that can flip the field in the punting game, I'm not, I'm not sure that's something Oklahoma has right now. And uh, Zach Schmidt has been, iffy in his accuracy so if you if you get into a uh a rugby game and you got a lot and you got a bunch of field goal attempts uh that loom large between these two teams uh i don't know if oklahoma feels entirely comfortable with that so again as i mentioned earlier the oklahoma drill podcast is coming your way on thursday the under the visor pregame podcast is coming your way on friday lots more in-depth analysis of this matchup as we prepare for OU Texas, the final Big 12 edition in the Cotton Bowl this weekend. This has been Quick Slants on the OU Insider YouTube channel. For Jesse Crittenden, I am Parker Thune. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.